What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about stick insects. I'm first going to give a rundown about stick insects and then I'm going to be showing you how to actually care for stick insects if you ever wanted to keep one as a pet. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So the species of stick insect that I'm going to be mainly showing off in this video is Diaferomera femorata, which is commonly referred to as the northern walking stick. Now this one is an adult female, and then up at the top, I have an adult male right here. Now what's interesting is that I actually just recently found these stick insects outside, and they were mating, which was pretty cool. So three years ago, I made a care video on Heteropteryx dilatata, which is commonly referred to as the Malayan jungle nymph. They are a species of stick insect, if you're not familiar with them, but I really just covered them in the video. I didn't really talk about stick insects as a whole, but in this video, uh, that is what I'm going to be doing. So stick insects are insects that are found within the order known as Phasmatodia, and there are over 3,000 different species of stick insects found worldwide. Now, also within the order Phasmatodia, you also have leaf insects as well, but for the sake of this video, I'm only going to be focusing on stick insects. This may not come as a surprise to many, but stick insects get their name due to their stick-like body, which I'm sure many of you knew already. Uh, they look like branches that fell off from a tree. But believe it or not, there are many species of stick insects that don't necessarily resemble sticks at all. Take, for example, the species that I mentioned earlier, Heteropteryx villatata, commonly referred to as the Malayan jungle nymph. The females of the species, as you can see, do not at all look like any stick, at least not a stick that I have seen. Uh, they kind of look like leaves, although they are not leaf insects. Uh, the males, for example, they, yeah, I mean, for the most part, they look like sticks, more so than the females, but this is due to sexual dimorphism. So if you're not familiar with what sexual dimorphism is, it is basically when a male and female of a particular species exhibits different characteristic traits. This may include body size, body coloration, uh, different appendages, and so on and so forth. Take for example the Malayan jungle nymph. The females are much wider as you can see, their bodies are very thick. Uh, the males however are very slender, much skinnier than the females. The females are of a bright green coloration. Sometimes the females can even come out as a yellow coloration, a different color morph. Uh, but the males pretty much stay the same. As you can see also, the males have wings which are able to support them in flight. Whereas the females, their wings are reduced and vestigial in the sense that they are unable to support them in flight. However, they still serve a purpose. When the female feels threatened, she'll actually rub her wings together, which will create a crackling sound, and that is known as stridulation. Stridulation is when an organism rubs two or more body parts together to create a sound. So it's a stridulatory sound that is used to fend off predators whenever she feels threatened. And this doesn't just go for the Malayan jungle nymph. Many species of sick insects, uh, the females usually have reduced wings and the males are usually capable of flying due to their fully functional wings. Now, when it comes to the diet of stick insects, stick insects are herbivorous, so they feed exclusively on plants. Many species of stick insects typically, for the most part, feed on the same variety of plant. This may include oak plants, um, rose, bramble, ivy, eucalyptus, and so on and so forth. Some species, they are a little bit more restrictive in their diet, but the plants that I just mentioned, usually a lot of sick insects feed on those particular plants. All right, so the enclosure that you're gonna house your sick insect in, or sick insects, if you have more than one, uh, you're gonna want something that has a lot of ventilation. So you can use something like a mesh cubed, that is what this is. Uh, if you saw my Malayan jungle nymph video, the one that I made three years ago, 
the enclosure uh, was pretty much a mesh enclosure. It was just much taller than this. Um, so this is the taller version. You can use something like that as well if you're housing a lot of sick insects or if your sick insects are large in size. Um, but yeah, just something with ventilation. Now, if you saw my mantis breeding video, you'll know that this is just a temporary enclosure that I use to house things in, whether it be for breeding or just temporary use. Um, don't worry, the sick insects are not going to be living in this <laughs> stained enclosure. I'm actually going to release them back out in the wild after I am done recording this video. So I just wanted to feature them in the video, but they will be back in their normal habitat, which is outside. Lastly, if you saw my Eastern Leopard Grasshopper video, I housed them within a Reptibreez. A Reptibreez is a very nice enclosure if you're looking for something with a lot of ventilation. They are perfect for keeping sick insects in as well. Now the species of stick insect that you have will determine what it will feed on. So the northern walking stick will commonly feed on rose as well as other various plants. Rose grows all around me where I live. It is readily available. And so it's super easy to go out and collect. So just, you know, go online, make, make sure you know what species of stick insect that you have so that you can feed them their appropriate diet. A quick warning when feeding stick insects is to make sure that the plants that you give them are organic. Just make sure they are not sprayed with any pesticides or they use any fertilizers because that will possibly and will most likely kill your stick insects. Um, I don't want that to happen to any one of you, so just make sure it is organic. Collecting them in the woods is a sure sign that, you know, it is organic. No one's just going to go deep in the woods or wherever and spray some pesticides. Um, that is usually the safest place to collect plants for sick insects. You may also go to a nursery too. Just make sure the plants that you buy are labeled organic um, so that they are safe for your sick insects to feed on. This next part may differ from yours depending on how many sick insects that you have. Because I only have two, it wasn't necessary for me to grab a huge container. So I took this little small plastic container, poked two holes in it, and just drove the stalks of the plants through the holes and into the water. This just ensures that the plants last a little bit longer um, so they don't wither as fast and you don't have to keep replacing them. Um, but yeah, just use the appropriate size container depending on how many sick insects you have if you have a whole bunch yeah use a big bigger container or multiple containers and just use a lot of plants um obviously there's just two they don't need that many all right so it's going to look something like that as you can see the male he's all the way back there on the wall see him all right so the next thing that i want to talk about is breeding now, breeding stick insects is super easy. You really don't have to do anything. Uh, the males will just mate with the females once both become adults. So once both become adults, the males will literally just go and find a female in the enclosure and will proceed to mate with them. It's that easy. Now, the next thing that happens is a female will then become you know, fertilize and she will then begin to lay eggs. Now, depending on the species of stick insect that you have, this species will drop its eggs. And what I mean by that is just wherever it's at in the enclosure, it will just, they'll just pop out <laughs> and they'll just literally drop and fall to the bottom of the enclosure. Now, some species of stick insects, you have to provide them with a container with substrate to prompt them to lay their eggs into it. So, for example, the thorny devil stick insect, Eurycantha calcarata, if you give them a container filled with moist substrate, after the females are fertilized, they will use their ovipositor, which is their egg-laying organ, to dig and deposit their eggs into the moist substrate. And then from there, you can leave the eggs in there if you want to, or you can take them out and put them in an incubation container. And I'll show you what that is in a second. So since I've had this female, she has actually dropped a few eggs for me, which I will show you. They resemble little tiny seeds, as you can see. 
And what I'm gonna do with these is I'm actually going to put them in an incubation box, which I will show you how to make. So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European Hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. Alright, so you're going to want a container that is ventilated. You can use something like this. And then you're going to take a paper towel and you're just going to place it at the bottom of the container, just like that. Next, we're going to get our sick and sec eggs and you're going to place them right on the paper towel. So just like that. And then the way to incubate them is super simple and easy. You are just going to lightly spray them. Just make sure that the paper towel is damp or I guess you could say moist. You don't want it like sopping with water because that is going to cause mold. So just make sure the paper towel is a little wet, just like that. And then you want to check on this paper towel every now and then every few days to make sure um, it is not dry because if it's dry, then the eggs are going to die. Um, so I don't know if you want to keep that little saying in your head. <laughs> if it's dry, the eggs are going to die. Um, so yeah, the eggs are very susceptible to desiccation. And so you want to keep the paper towel moist, but not overly damp where mold can grow. Um, because mold will also kill your eggs as well. Also, it depends on the species of sick insect that you have. Um, so this particular species requires a cold period, also known as an overwintering, where the eggs have to go through a period of coldness in order to properly hatch. And so you know, these are a species where the eggs will go through the coldness of winter and then will hatch during the warmer weathers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place these in the refrigerator and I'm still going to keep them moist, you know, go in every now and then to check on the paper towel to see if it's dry and just give it water if it is. And then once spring hits, then I will remove these out from the refrigerator and continue the process of spraying the paper towel. And then hopefully the eggs will soon hatch. So just check on the particular species of stick insect that you have to make sure that they do not require an overwintering. The majority, I believe, do not but like I said just make sure. So one thing that I really wanted to talk about in terms of breeding and stick insects is that sometimes you don't always need a male stick insect for your female stick insect to lay fertile eggs and what I mean by that is that some species of female stick insects are actually able to lay fertile eggs without male intervention through a process known as parthenogenesis. So females that are able to reproduce parthenogenetically are able to create clones of themselves where their eggs that end up hatching, which are fertile, always end up hatching females and no males. And so some species of stick insects are able to reproduce sexually, some are able to reproduce parthenogenetically, and some are actually able to reproduce both sexually and parthenogenetically if no males are present they will just literally create clones of themselves now of course if you're unfamiliar or not if your species of stick insect is able to reproduce through parthenogenesis just go online and see i will say there are pros and cons the pro is that you don't ever need a male in the enclosure for your females to lay fertile eggs the con however is that eggs that are laid through parthenogenesis 
take much longer than eggs that are reproduced through sexual reproduction. So there are pros and cons, but I mean, it's not really that bad. This species, the Northern Walking Stick, is a species that reproduces through sexual reproduction. So it is not a parthenogenetic species. All right, that is going to conclude today's video. If you guys have any questions that I didn't cover in the video regarding the care for stick insects, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will do my best in trying to answer them. So if you enjoyed today's video, if you could please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, kelvinwiley.net, and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, also, I am going to be releasing the male and the female northern walking stick, like I said earlier. So let me go and do that. All right, back into the wild you guys go.